Well, hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to the weekend vlog. I'm out here at Briggs Wholesale Nursery. They're having a huge sale and I was invited by my new friend, Amber. I'm so excited to be here with her shopping for plants. Of course, we have the calculators out and we're calculating everything. This giant plant is, how much did you say it was? It's like 329. 329. Three scabiosa. Three scabiosa. And look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. So we're super excited. I want all the plants. We're gonna check it out. I think we're gonna get also some iceberg roses is uh, in the mix for today. Yeah, so totally. I'm looking for pollinator stuff. Are you looking for anything in particular? Everything. Everything. <laughs> All the things. All A the girl things. after my own heart. All right, well, join us as we shop for some plants. Well, so this yeah. will get larger and it will dry. Yeah. You see them in like wedding bouquets and things like that. Yeah. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, they're really pretty. Guys, check out this tobacco. I've never seen tobacco before. Isn't that pretty? So something I find really interesting now as a gardener and homesteader who uses essential oils is when I find the plants that essential oils are made of, like check out this helichrysum. My brain goes, I know this name from essential oils, but I had no idea what it looked like. And so then when I see it in person, it like bridges the gap for me and I go, oh, it's really interesting. But it really is beautiful and it's super soft. It's really quite lovely. Ooh, I'm in a very dark section. Of course, I'm thinking of Tommy and his love of black plants. I have to be careful not to buy all the black plants for him. Ooh, very cool. Carpet of sedum. That's cool. This would be so nice for a sensory garden. Okay, here's another one that I love. Mexican feather grass. Remember how yesterday I was ooing and aahing over the dahlias up north? I just found dahlias here and they are, let's see how expensive they are. Oh my gosh, dahlias for a dollar fifty. I'm so excited. Oh, and they're so lovely, you guys. Check this out. So I love the idea of using thyme as a filler for anywhere that you kind of have some cracks. And they're selling this in a large like tray form. And that might be a little overkill, but I am on the hunt for some thyme that I could use as filler so that it kind of droops over and gets that enchanted feeling going. Also, I'm finding all of the sedum really interesting. Lemon thyme. Oh, you guys, in learning to grow different herbs, I have come across lemon thyme. And if you guys haven't tried mixing your herbs from like a standard rosemary or a standard thyme to mix something else kind of unique in there, like lemon thyme, I mean, it's really, really a treat. We like to add lemon thyme to like fish dishes to bring out that lemony citrus flavor. It's really, really good. I will just never get over how cute it is that thyme flowers, these beautiful light purple flowers. So fun fact about me, we're gonna cover this in the fun fact about me video that's coming up. If you guys have questions that you wanna ask, be sure to submit them to me either in the comments down below here or on Instagram. But the fun fact I wanted to share with you is you see that back there? That is called society garlic. And when my mom was pregnant with me, I would make her so nauseous because I cannot stand the smell of it. And to this day, I get nauseous. I cannot be around society garlic. That is one thing I know I will never plant. I love that feeling of getting lost. totally get lost in here. As a still beginning gardener, I was starting to feel a little intimidated by all these variations of herbs, but luckily they've got some helpful signs here to help out the newbies like me. Oh guys, I just bought so many plants. Thank you. 
And my trunk is completely full to the rim. Yeah. It's okay though. It's good. We needed plants and it's good. I really like the selection I picked. I'm really excited to get them in the ground. Not that I didn't have enough going on this weekend with loading up the soil, but now we're going to have to dig up the braised bed planter in the back and add soil there as well. So I've really got my work cut out for me. <laughs> That's actually what we're going to go do right now. Hopefully the landscaping fabric that I ordered has arrived and we can start filling the beds. Oh, we've got our work cut out for us this weekend. <laughs> Today is fill the garden beds day and I want to show you what we're working with because a couple of things have changed since the premiere. The first major change is that we have doubled down on slats. So we have spaced out the slats every, like every other. Basically there is one slat spacing between each slat. So there are a lot of slats in here. Let me show you what it looks like. And then this lining is like three millimeter thick lining. It's a tarp that you would lay down for painting or something like that. We had this leftover actually given to us by family. And so I've just cut that into strips and I've lined the inside of it. I've stapled it into place. I've left about a six inch overlap for both this and the next piece of fabric, which is landscaping agri-fabric. Now in the premiere, you saw me use a much softer version of landscaping fabric and the feedback that I got was, hey, that's probably not gonna last more than a year or two. Now, being in a rental, you don't know how long you're gonna be here. So I was like, oh, it's fine, it doesn't matter. But let's say we are here three or four more years. I would like a fabric that's going to last. So I did some research and I'm actually gonna be using Agra fabric and I'll link everything down below. It's the stuff that they line like in nurseries in huge polytunnels. It's, what's, it's what they lay down as weed barriers. So it's actually got this poly something, something plastic poly something woven through it so that it's a lot more durable. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second as I cut that up and lay that into the bed. And we're back and it is lined. Does not have to be perfect, but I do recommend trying to get it into the corners so that you don't have pulling on the fabric because then things get wonky and with building anything, you just wanna try and have it be as stable as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This is not perfect, but um, I have tried to kind of push it down into the corners. There's no awkward pulling when the soil gets weighed down. We are almost done filling the test bed. This is the smallest bed and we wanted to see if there was going to be any bowing underneath, any issues with the fabric. And so far, so good. It's looking really great. Our bed is almost full. We've got a couple more inches to go before it's done. Let me show you guys what it's looking like. It's just about full and on the underside, no bowing at all. I'm so stoked. I am so pleased that our experiment is going well. I think this bodes well for us in the beds to come. For now, it's time for a break. Tommy helped me with the last couple of inches, which I so appreciate. All that's left to do is line the last two beds and shovel the dirt into those. I can't wait to plant my garden. Well guys, it's been a long day of chores and shoveling dirt. We are going to enjoy one of our household favorites, which is this tortilla soup. This recipe is from my mother-in-law and it is one of our favorites. We enjoy it probably at least once a month here. It's super easy, super delicious, and full of whole ingredients. If you guys want the recipe, check out my blog, heyitsagoodlife.com. I will link it down below as well. You guys have given me so much feedback that you're really enjoying the food and the recipes, so I will continue to do more of those. And if you guys have any requests, let me know. Okay 
guys, it's time to eat some tortilla soup, kick our feet up, and watch some Netflix. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you guys in the next vlog.